this weekend, this past weekend, I had uh, had a couple call me and say, hey, we're so excited, we bought some property, and we want to start getting plans together and getting ready to build. We want to try and build this coming summer. Would you be interested in helping us out? And I said, I, absolutely, I'd be happy to take a look at it and do some consulting for you or possibly work on the project. Um, but let's let's get into it and take a look at it. And and these folks spent a lot of money on this piece of property and, and they were super excited. However, as I started to look into the property and dig into it and, and start to ask the questions about, can you tell me where the power is located or how far away power is from the property? Have you looked at any of the well reports that are in that area? Do you know where the property lines are in relationship to the neighbors? Have you looked at the wetland maps to see how much wetland there is on the property? I, I got a, a look of deer in the headlights. Um, and it became apparent very, very quickly that this was an emotional purchase, that they were there on a beautiful blue sky day in the summertime, looked at the property, fell in love with it, had to have it, and wrote a check for it. The problem is that, that now, going back, and looking at the property is is it going to be buildable are you going to be able to put the house there that you want um, and is the is your budget going to be able to get it done um, you know one of the things that that we talked about was the access to this property is is just just maybe slightly better than a logging road and and so it would be great in the summertime but as soon as it gets wet in the fall or covered in snow um, it's either going to become too muddy or there's not going to be wide enough to push snow out of the way or who's who knows come spring when things start to to melt if it'll even be passable and so starting starting to think about okay how do we how do we build this road to be able to get access year round so that it's wide enough and then how do we get the power in the ground and phone it if that's even possible so at, at this point um, in the conversation with these folks it, it was okay do, do we look at maybe subdivide this this parcel and sell it or maybe we throw it back on the market and maybe next year somebody else comes along and buys it do you really want to go down this path I was I was a little heartbroken I was a little a little bit sad for the people because I have I have been in that position when we f first left the left the city and wanted to get to the mountains and wanted to live a more rural lifestyle it was let's just buy a place and get there um, I didn't even necessarily with with 25 years of experience I didn't fully understand the questions that I should be asking I didn't understand how a lot of the the, the regulatory institutions whether it's federal wetlands or or uh, the local county zoning code or um, the the HOAs how they all interact and what questions I should be asking and and what I really can do or can't do with that property before I buy it um, so truthfully as I talked to these folks um, I, I saw myself in these people and I, I, I I wanted to put this video together to try and share some information that would help people make good purchases, be able to live a rural lifestyle without getting in over your head, without biting off more than you can chew. Um, but in hopes of giving you enough information to ask the right questions, to, to, to understand 
what that rural lifestyle really entails and what it's all about. You know, we're having this conversation and we're talking about square footage in the house and they said, you know, we, we'd really like about 4,500 square feet. And, and I said, that's, that's a pretty big house. And they said, yeah. And I said, okay, so, and there, uh, any other things, you know, porches, uh, decks, uh, I said, well, you would like a maybe a two or a three car garage. And I said, here's the thing you got to understand about living a rural lifestyle is that that you, square footage in a house is not as important or becomes less important than garage space. Um, because a lot of square footage means a lot of utility bills in propane, gas, uh, electric or firewood, whatever it may be to heat that house. Um, and so smaller, more efficient living space, it, it makes more sense in a rural environment, especially if the winters are a little bit longer, if there's a lot more cold weather, on and on. Um, but garage space, on the other hand, becomes a, a top priority. Getting stuff out of the weather, getting a space where you can have cars, trucks, your snow plow, your four-wheeler, your tractor, um, a place for tools because you become you become your own your own car mechanic you become your own carpenter um, just by necessity just in the remoteness of where you live and what it takes to either get people out to you or get your cars equipment projects whatever they might be to somebody who can work on it and and so this was a great conversation and, and a lot of kind of aha uh -huh moments where where the kind of light bulbs came on where you got to take that 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 way of seeing things that 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 kind of citified city mentality of priorities um, they, and there's there's things that just don't become as important they were talking about uh, drilling wells and have have you looked at the well reports have, do you know what it's going to take to drill wells out there are they 300 foot are they 800 foot what are they um, and a lot of the information that came back as I asked the questions were well the realtor said well the realtor said well the realtor said um, realtors are the last person that you should be taking solid information from the only thing you should be asking a realtor is where can I get the information? Um, they are not necessarily making decisions or sharing information that is in your best interest. They get paid when you buy the land and they're going to tell you what they think you need to hear in order to get you to buy that land. So relying on your realtor or a realtor to give you information about the property that you're buying is is a great place to start to gather information where can i get on a county website where can i get on online and and look at information about this property where is the office um, where they have um, you know where, wherever that might be a county office or um, who's the president of the hoa who that i can call and talk to them about People who actually live there have spent multiple years, multiple seasons there. Um, those are the people, um, sorry, th those are the questions that you want to ask that realtor. And those are the people that you should be asking for is, how do I get a hold of the neighbors? How do I get a hold of, of, of the county? Where can I get information that is not biased, that is not money motivated? This is the thing that, that I struggle with um is that these these people call me and they're all excited they just won the lottery they bought a piece of property um and a lot of them have no idea what they're in for or what it's really going to cost or take to to get the house built to get the roads built to, to 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 really to build a small city on your property you've got to build all the infrastructure uh all the buildings um, and then you've got to maintain all of it, um, which is just, 
it's a different way of thinking that most people that have lived in the city for years and years just don't possess when you've become accustomed to having your garbage picked up and somebody else plows the road and, and you write a check to the city. Um, it's, it's a different mindset. Um, I, talk, I talk with a lot of people about the scenario of house cats and alley cats. Um, a house cat, it's warm, they're taken care of, their food is provided for them. They, they, don't, they don't think about where their next meal is coming from. And alley cats are on the hunt all the time. If they want to eat, uh, they, they've got to they got to go find it themselves. If they want warmth, they got to take care of them take care of it themselves. Um, their happiness is in their own hands. So I talk with a lot of people about the alley cat versus the house cat. Now the house cat has everything taken care of. All of their food is provided for them. Uh, temperature is set. Uh, they're just waiting on their next meal, and it's a very, very comfortable life. Um, and then we have the alley cat. And the alley cat, if they want to eat, they, they got to hunt it down. And if they want to be warm, they got to find a place to get warm. Um, the alley cat has a lot more freedoms and a lot more choices. Uh, uh, but the house cat has 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 that that comfort and reliability. So. There's a, just a different mindset when when you come from the city and you've been a bit of a house cat and you want to live this lifestyle of, that, of an alley cat where your happiness, your success is in your hands. It's a different way of thinking and there's a lot of things you can do to set yourself up for success. You know, building a house with a two car garage and then not having a place to put your snow plow or your tractor or your four wheeler or store your chainsaws or those types of things is not going to set you up for success when the snow happens or trees fall across the road or whatever it might be you're just not going to be set up and prepared for it so um again i i want to share good information i i want people to to understand that that i i made maybe not a mistake i mean Yes, I, it, I could have made some better decisions, but I also got a really good education buying that property, going through all of the, the issues and the struggles and the problems that I did because I got an education um, and it's helped me to make better choices in land since then. It's helped me to see things and, and certainly with some of the development and construction things that we do, uh, I apply a lot of those lessons that I learned early on in in buying rural land. So um, I appreciate you watching the channel. Um, I hope that you find this information useful and I would love to hear from you. I, I love hearing people's stories. I love being able to learn from your experience and I hope that you're able to learn from mine. So. Um, let me know in the comments or send me an email, reach out, um, love to hear from you and we can both learn and grow together.